suggest to you that you have the skills and expertise to represent the community sector. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Morning, everyone. Uh, can you hear me okay? I'm not sure, entirely sure I need this, but uh, I'll, I'll give it a go anyway. Uh, so my name is David Wright um, from the Herefordshire Council. Um, I've been with the council for about six weeks, so I'm fairly new, but I'm, I'm finding, gradually finding my feet. Um, the, the title up there is Economy and Place Board, but it's really uh, talking to you about this. And I'm conscious you might think, why is someone talking to us about um, uh, it, it, an economic development plan effectively? But I think it was really useful just to hear from Michaela that there's, there's links into it, and that, that place-based approach is looking at all influences on, on a place, and in your case particularly on young, young, young people. So um, there's a, a, a connect, connectivity here, and I think it also connects quite well to the, the next talk you're going to have and discussion about the, uh, the community plan. Um, so that's, that's a little bit of context. Um, oh, sorry, we've got, we've got another introduction. That's, that's who I am. Um, and certainly, you know, following on the, the, the discussion this morning, if anyone wants catch me um, either afterwards or, or um, you know, at a later stage to find out more detail, that's absolutely fine. We're going to try and whiz through it a little bit, but um, Herefordshire Council recognised that, um, you know, the, the economic development is key, key focus on, on economic development and the economy of the area. Um, and I'll give you some reasons why, why that's um, where, where our starting point is. Um, but over the last um, couple of years, the council has been working with consultants and others and engaging with, with um, other people in relation to developing this, this plan. Um, the starting point is that some of the challenges that Herefordshire has um, the lowest um, GVA per hour in, uh, in a county in England. So effectively, we, we've got a, a, a fairly low um, employment base, we've got a low wage economy. Um, it's no great surprise predominantly agricultural um, area, um, a lot of uh, labour intensive businesses, but that, that impacts across the whole, um, you know, across the whole of our society. Um, and, and linked to that, we've also got a, a, um, relatively low higher skills. Um, I'll come on to the, the positives of that, that's, that's maybe improving. Um, and, and like lots of parts of the country, um, we, we have difficulty in, in, uh, in recruiting um, skilled workforce, um, perhaps particularly because of the geography, because we're a little bit off the um, off the, the mainstream part of the country. But I think that's something everyone's everyone's struggling with: uh, limited infrastructure um, and uh, limited affordable housing. So we've we've got significant challenges to face, um, which impact on the economy and then impact indirectly, you know, in, or, or directly into into the, the wider community. Um, we do start with some strengths. We've got some strengths in, in cyber security, um, technology, food and drink, um, defence and security linked to obviously our, our, the fact we're a, a, a national, maybe even international um, uh, military um, headquarters or centre. Um, culture and creative industries, we've just been finding out recently about the scale of that. And, um, it, it would appear that um, the, the creative sector in, in Herefordshire employs about 8% of, of the working population, which is a big surprise, really it's more than what most people thought. Um, manufacturing, engineering, and a growing tourism sector. So that, there, there are strengths. Um, we want to build on those strengths, but also look at other areas. Um, Herefordshire has a high uh, quality of life. A lot of people move here um, to, to live. A lot of people stay here and don't move on because they like, they like the area. Uh, and, and very much what this group is about, um, a, a sense of place and a strong, a strong community. Um, how can we build on that? Um, the council over the last um, 10 years or so has been working um, with partners to develop the, what we refer to as the Hereford um, Enterprise Zone, which is down in, in Rollerwas, um, formerly um, Brownfield site. So that's been a big focus over the last 10 years or so, coming towards an end. Um, so that's, that's a strength and a place to build from. But we do have significant um, lack of employment land elsewhere in the county, which we're looking to address. Um, there's a growing higher education offer. offer. So we've got one of the only um, remaining uh, art, dedicated arts colleges in the country, which is a real strength. We need to celebrate, and, and um, that's being developed with um, student accommodation and, and things like that to, to try and improve that offer and make it more of a focal point. We've got the, um, a, a 
a very successful further education college started to branch into higher education as well. Um, and we've got the um, NMI, the New Model Institute of Technology and Engineering, which is really a, a groundbreaking initiative, one of the, the only university, new universities to be established in the country for, for many, many years, and it's here in, in Hereford, but, but you know, do be shout about that. And as that develops um, over the coming years, that will have more impact. So really strong side to, to try and address that, that shortage of, um, uh, of education, um, higher education particularly. Um, and we've been successful in recent years in attracting funding. So we've had um, some of the government's <coughs> levelling up funding, um, towns funding, which is, is um, being developed at the moment through um, something called the Stronger Towns Fund. You may well have heard of it, but if you need more information, by all means, catch me. And I've just noticed a typo, but um, the, the, the last one is, is meant to be UK Shared Prosperity Fund. So that's, that's money, about nine, nine million pounds uh, that came to um, Herefordshire Council to distribute across um, across the, 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 the community and there's a significant pot that will be announced fairly fairly soon around community capacity building and also around um, community infrastructure so um, watch watch out for that so that, there's, there's some real opportunities um, how do we kind of pull that all together um, so the council worked with um, consultants uh, to, to, to bring the best external views and, and the, the best sort of case studies and experience from elsewhere and rather than just an economic plan that focuses on businesses and um, you know, developing the economy, the, the view was to take a much more holistic um, uh, view, picking up very much what Michaela was talking about earlier, um, looking at um, these, I think they refer to them as the six capacities, but it's, it, you, know, you can see hopefully from that, it's certainly much more than you would normally think of from an economic development point of view, including you know, community and partnerships where, where this group particularly sits. Uh, but also environment, climate change, um, enterprise, infrastructure, um, and the people representing kind of around some of what I've talked about in, in terms of the, um, the education skills, trying to uh, uh, support our people. Um, just holding down a bit to, to, to the sort of um, the, the focus of this group, um, I, should, I, I can, for anyone who's interested, I can, um, I can share this afterwards, or maybe uh, give it to Christine to, to suck it as an electronic version of this. Um, but within this, there's a, there's a section on community and partnerships, um, and effectively, um, this, this recognises that thriving communities um, and um, a dynamic voluntary community and social enterprise sector is crucial to this wider view of the, the economy. Um, one of the, the, some of the other actions and, and, and objectives within the community partnerships section are around um, creating and retaining value in the local economy, so um, looking to, to try and ensure that, that um, opportunities for um, contracts and, and, and for employment are um, offered to local people and pe local people are developed and, and there's a key challenge there for the, the voluntary community and social enterprise sector to be part of that and to demonstrate good, good practice. Um, and then uh, jointly, you know, very much like this group, are jointly working together to tackle issues around low pay um, and, and particularly identified as, as employment and social care. So some, some quite meaty, meaty challenges for the, the, the community and voluntary sector to, to look at within there. Just talk about a few of the kind of positives, and this is maybe more my, my area around um, the sort of economic development. We've already got touched on um, Skyland Park, the, the um, Hereford Enterprise Zone successful, been developed, we want to learn from that and move on from that and spread that, that those opportunities around the, around the county. Um, and, and an example of that, just, just before Christmas, the, the council announced um, funding um, for the Ross Enterprise Park. So some of you may have heard it's a site called Model Farm, <coughs> the, the, the council's owned for many years and always had aspirations to develop as, a, um, as, a, as an enterprise park. We have tried to get funding from other people to, to support this, but unsuccessfully. So the council's really um, nailed its colours to the mast and, and uh, identified funding within the council to make this happen. So that, that over the next, it's not a quick fix, these things take time, but over the next two to three years, you should, should see things happening in Ross and Y. Um, and, and what that's all about is, is 
um, I think as Michaela was saying again, lots of links here, but about shouting about the, the county, about um, trying to put it out there um, that, that Herefordshire is a great place and try and bring inward investment um, in, in from, from out there. And, and uh, Ross and Y is a great location because it's so accessible to, to the, the main road, uh, road networks and so on. Um, I mentioned, touched on earlier, we've had Stronger Towns funding, um, so um, that's uh, 22.4 million, not an insignificant amount of money, um, and, a, and a key project within the um, 16 projects that are being funded in Hereford um, City are, is the um, Hereford Museum and Art Gallery, which is one that the, 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 the council is leading. Again, none of these things are quick fix because it, it's, it's investment, but um, you know, it, over the course of um, the next couple of years, um, I won't put an de absolutely definite date, but two, two to three years, then this should come to fruition and it'll create a, a major um, a, a facility for local people, but also a, a facility for um, visitors to the area, complementing the, the, the cathedral and other aspects of the city centre to really um, start to put um, Hereford on the, on the map. Um, so we've got this, um, we've got this um, economic plan being agreed. Um, it, it, it recognises that there's um, a whole range of par partnership boards across across the county, and I guess this is this is one of them. Um, but it, it, as far as the, the, the kind of direction of the um, the big economic plan, as we call it, um, that they're, they're not so much particularly coordinated. So um, the idea was to we, we need a, a partnership structure to to lead on place and place shaping and and the economy. Um, Bringing in all these different um, uh, the, these different aspects, um, and, and the idea would, would be this that under the banner of um, economy and the, the economy and place board, it would bring together key public, private, and community partners um, to give an overall um, direction and steer for uh, for this work. Um, this this was all this all came to, came out just um, early part of last year. Um, and then we had a, uh, something called an election came and, and, and things, things changed and, and, and so on. So um, the, the previous administration endorsed the economic plan, um, but it's taken a little bit of time for the, uh, the, the, the new political administration to, to, to get involved in that. But that's progressing now. Um, and there was some work done earlier on, and you might be aware of that, that there was some um, um, adverts and recruitment uh, um, done uh, for, for an original idea of a board. During that process, it became clear that there was a, a bit of a lack of clarity of what that what that board was and quite how how we're going to represent different sectors and so on. So, kind of going back to the drawing board a little bit. Um, in the meantime, there's been changes around things like the local enterprise partnerships, the LEP, um, all across the country are being um, disbanded. In this case, the Marches um, LEP is is no longer going to be in place after April. So that brings another dimension. Um, potentially some, some funding to the area. Um, so we've taken, taken stock uh, and, and reviewed, re reviewed arrangements in the light of that um, and now looking, looking forward. Um, so certainly there's still, still recognition that we need an overarching partnership and governance arrangement to kind of lead this and oversee um, uh, the, 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 the plan. Um, but previously there was a, a plan of a board of 15, that's recognised as being too large and the, the plan needs to really relate to um, the, uh, the six aspects, the six, six um, themes that I, I talked about earlier. Um, so the idea is we, we now have a more focused board of um, about, up to about eight representatives. Um, it, it will be led by the leader of the council um, as, the, as the kind of main organisation um, taking this forward but obviously trying to get as much um, input. And I think the, the important bit is how um, the, the representatives of, and, and as, as Christine said, we're looking for a representative from, from this group or from the community uh, sector, how that, that group feeds up and feeds back. And that's gonna be a, a, key, a key aspect. Um, we're, we're developing uh, terms of reference just to make sure that there'll be um, a turnover and accountability and that people um, as a clear rotation in terms of in terms of role. Um, so this is this is kind of the current the current model of how we see it working. Um, the so looking at that, I, I, I grow, um, represented around economic growth, I, 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 I input from the skills sector. 
um, climate and nature and community um, partnerships. So the, the, the one on uh, your uh, right is, is where we're looking to, uh, to, to, to fill uh, at the moment. Um, over and above this, um, we're still still grappling with how we get input from some of the other aspects, and there might be, um, you know, around um, infrastructure and and, and, and you know, the other couple of aspects uh, in there. So um, hopefully, that's given a bit of a I'll go back. Well, hopefully, a bit of a flavour of um, of what we're trying to do. Um, it's an exciting time for Herbertshire because the, the, there's lots going on. I mentioned lots of bits and pieces about funding. Um, and it's, it's the opportunity for, um, for, for to get involvement from from this this sector. So, but we'll, we'll have to open up to any questions um, generally about what we're talking about. Yeah. So, just to just to say that um, there are some um, explanations around how we support community partnership reps to fulfil that role and, and work with the wider sector to to give them that mandate of, of what they might need in the role. And I'm happy if anybody's interested in being the rep for this board, um, I think the next meeting's on February the 19th. Yes, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, I mean, appreciate- It's the first meeting actually. Yeah. 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 So I appreciate that might not suit people's diaries, but um, just to have that in mind. If anybody's interested and wants to talk about this role and express an interest, Please uh, come and see me or email me, um, Christine at healthwatchherefordshire.co.uk, um, because we're really keen to support David and the work of this board. So, has anybody got any questions for David? Yeah. I'm not sure this is. Oh, it is working. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hi. Yeah. Um, I was just interested to know um, if you. You obviously explained that um, you're interested in um, getting local people um, to fill their local local jobs, um, and obviously just thinking about the, the enterprise zone. Um, I wasn't too sure how that would. Obviously, I think there was a focus on cyber security. Um, how how would you uh, fulfil those those type of jobs with um, yeah from people from the town um, if they don't necessarily have those skills? So. Um you, you certainly picked up on something. It's not, my, not certainly not my area of expertise, and I mentioned only six weeks into the job, so I'm, I'm learning. But certainly, from my understanding, there's, there's already a pretty strong focus on cyber, linked quite closely to um, to the, the the army camp, and also uh, people coming out of the, the, the military who, who've got those skills. And I guess what we want to do is have ideally keep them here rather than them, you know, swanning off elsewhere, um, and hopefully. You know, a lot of people come to the military um, and they, they bring their families and they like the area. So, so it's about building on that strength. Um, the, down on the, on the enterprise zone, there's the um, Midlands Cyber Security Centre um, at the far end of the zone, um, which is a big investment by um, a range of partners, including the University of, of Wolverhampton. So we are working with, with them to try and identify um, how they do what they need to do from a, from a university point of view, but also they uh, engage and use that facility to, to, to bring on local people, to, probably through local businesses. Um, but there are things like a, um, a, 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 a what it's called a cyber room where they can test things. So it's about um, that, that development of um, of skills. Um, and, and I know just you know from from chatting to to um, some of the cyber related businesses. Business is booming, so I was talking to a business a couple of weeks ago who are employing and recruiting uh, more people to work in their business, and and they're looking ideally to, to local people. So it's it's using that piece of infrastructure invested by the university um, to um, to try and progress that industry. And I mentioned it's a focus of the big plan, so it's about building on that and actually not just looking with internally but externally to to, to top that up a bit more and to actually try and establish, as far as we can, um, this part of the world, Herefordshire, Hereford, as, as a centre that's widely known nationally. There's a, a bit of a, an idea around a cyber triangle, which is G GCHQ in, in, uh, in Cheltenham, uh, the cyber industries in Malvern and, and Hereford, and just trying to build on that cluster, um, which is a lot about promotion. I didn't, I didn't mention it earlier, but one of the things we're looking to do on the back of the, the Ross and Y um, Enterprise Zone, we're looking to um, develop our, our service. I, I run a, a very small 
um, economic development service at the moment, or responsible for leading that. But we, we currently don't have anyone focused on inward investment, and we're looking to um, recruit someone to, to work around inward investment. That's about promoting Herefordshire out with um, and trying to raise the profile and, and get businesses to think this is where we could locate. And cyber's a, a, an absolute strength in that, in that process. Hopefully that answers your question. Yeah. Yeah. Sam, can you go to Frank at the back? I'll go to Judy next. David, just to clarify what might have been confusing, on the Stronger Towns Fund board slide, you put 22.4 million, and then you put 18 million for the museum and the art gallery. It is not 18 million of the 22.4. Um, there's about four or five million, I think, maybe a, a more, and there's then match funding and other investment. So all of the 22.4 or most of it is not going to the museum. It's quite a wide range of investment across the city. I think it's helpful that you understand that. Thank you. Yeah, so that's a really good point, Frank, and I, I, you, you spotted that I hadn't. But, uh, you know, had anyone else asked? Yes, absolutely. And, and, and actually, it, it signifies a, a, a benefit of the government have given 22.4 million pounds of investment into Herford City, but actually that levers out an awful lot more money. So I don't have the figures, I don't know if you do, Frank, but you know, the 22.4 million from the government probably results in somewhere closer to 50 or more million being spent, 60, 70 million being spent in Hereford. So, um, and that's what we try to do. When we, when we are able to tap into government funding, we try and maximize it and make sure that it, it benefits. We're doing that even at a micro scale uh, we've got this UK Share Prosperity Fund, which is a, a government fund. We're launching it out, and we're doing next couple of weeks' time. We're launching a um, a, a scheme for tourism businesses, and the, the, we always have what we call a, um, a, a match funding element to it. So, you know, if someone applies, they'll. Um, I'm sure you all know this anyway. But if someone applies, um, you know, for for ten thousand pounds we would expect them to find £10,000 or you know, whatever it might be, it doesn't need to always be matching 50-50, but certainly more money in. And one of the things I think we need to shout about a bit more is the, the global aspect of, of how much we spend, uh, we, we spend, because actually when we get money in, it's also local businesses, local community groups, others investing in their communities and in their businesses as well. So yeah, really good point, thanks. Thank you. Julie. I've noticed in your particular list of challenges, you said that there are uh, low levels of people with higher level skills. And I just really wanted to flag that um, we've got under the indices of deprivation uh, some of the most deprived LSOAs of people with adult skills or who've missed their opportunity of learning. And considering that we've got quite a sort of a shortage of people within the workforce, I just wonder what you're going to be doing for people who've missed their opportunity of learning to help to get them back um, into, into work. So it's a really, really good point. Um, one of the elements, a relatively small element of the UK Share Prosperity Fund is, some, is a government scheme called Multiply. So that is specifically around um, uh, increasing um, skills and helping to um, raise the level of, of numeracy skills. So um, part of the council's remit, and we're working with a range of partners to try and um, build numeracy skills through that. Obviously, we can only do what we're, we're funded to do. So you know, fun, funding is always a major challenge. So we have to tap into funding. But over and above that, for people who are in employment, um, we, um, my team, um, run a, um, a, a scheme called the Growth Hub. And it's currently branded as the Marches Growth Hub. From from uh, from April onwards, it will be Herefordshire because that's part of it. The Let um, demise of the Let, um, and that's about trying to provide um, mostly, most of the time free uh, training uh, and, and, and skills development um, to, to, to bring people on in, in, in within businesses. The other, the, the other nice link to, to, to mention is we, next Monday, um, so you may or may not be aware, next week is classed nationally as, as Apprenticeship Week. Next Monday we, we've got a, an event called the Skills and Employers Roundtable um, where we're trying to bring um, all the main um, training and, 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 and education providers uh, locally together um, and, a, and a number of the, the main employers together to identify what the, what the skills gaps are within the employed um, uh, people in the area 
and, and how the, the, the growing training providers we've got in the area can actually help meet that. So that's, that's certainly for, for people who are in employment. The, the people that fall through that, that hoop and, and through that net is a, is a challenge and I guess we'll, we'll welcome, welcome um, you know, opportunities and experience and, and how, how to tap into those. It would be good to see it included and I look forward to seeing where that's covered within the new county plan. Mm. That would be great, thank you. A uh, really nice segue for us, I think. Yeah. Okay, oh, thank you. Oh, go on. Uh, Sam, can you take the next one? Um, I just wanted to follow up on your point about the fund that you just mentioned being to look at numeracy, numeracy skills. Um, it is very frustrating uh, knowing the people that we are working with, that funding seems to be focused very much on numeracy and, and getting English. Um, it is depriving our economy of the huge range of skills available um, that individuals have to offer, but they don't manage to get their GCSE level two equivalent. And it is frustrating that we can't support those people to be the best they are, because you find yourself constrained that the greater amount of money goes towards numeracy, rather than looking more widely at the skills of the individual, and whether they have a functional maths skill, which is what people mostly need in life, as opposed to being able to sort out trigonometry. Um, so it would be really good to see that that was reflected as well, um, that when students are leaving school, um, not all of them will achieve their level two uh, qualifications, so five, five GCSEs at uh, level four and above. Um, many will only have level one qualifications, and I think we do ourselves a great disservice by not recognising that, and it would be good if that could also be recognised, because if you've got a young person who comes out of school with half a dozen up to level three uh, passes, but that's a level one qualification, they have shown commitment to learning and there's something to really build on from that. So that would be good to properly acknowledge. Um, but added to that, um, where are the apprenticeships through the hospital? There are none. You can do administrative work, but there seem to be very, very few. Um, and, and there's a massive gap in skills that, that are needed for the hospital. So I think there's a, 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 a much wider debate to be looking at about how apprenticeships work in the county as well. Okay, I'm sure I won't be able to do your, your question full justice, but um, I'll start by saying trigonometry never helped me. So, um, you know, I, I, I think certainly I recognise that, but I think colleagues do as well. Uh, my understanding is the multiply um, uh, model, which has come, to be fair, it's come from government, and it's obviously based on the, the government view that, um, that maths and, to a less extent, well, maths, maths and English are, are, are key determinants that are holding people back. I think the opportunity arises when you get people engaging, this is, this is post-education, post post-school based people, when you get them educate, uh, when you get them engaging in some form of education and training, even if it is you know, on the on the um, numeracy or literacy side, then there's a potential to work with them and, and get them to look at other other opportunities and other other ways of upping their skills. Um, in relation to the um, to the NHS and to, to um, apprenticeships, we've, we've actually got somebody from Y Valley to, to answer right. that. Okay, well, I was just going to say, I'll, I'll, I'll say.